Imagine a time of political turmoil where the power of the Senate is dwindling and the Roman Republic is on the brink of collapse. This was the state of Rome before the rise of a young man named Octavian, who would later be known as Augustus Caesar. But our story starts in a time of strife and struggle, in the heart of the Roman Republic. Rome, before Octavian, was a republic in name, but the reality was a different story. The Senate, once the powerhouse of Roman politics, had seen its influence decline while ambitious individuals were vying for power. The balance was delicate, and the tension palpable. In this tumultuous time some figures stood out. Julius Caesar, a military genius and charismatic leader, had won the hearts of the people and the loyalty of many in the army. His actions, however, were causing ripples in the political landscape. He was growing too powerful, too fast, and this alarmed the traditionalist senators who believed in the sanctity of the Republic. Another key player in this drama was Pompey, a respected general and statesman. His rivalry with Caesar would ignite a series of civil wars that tore the Republic apart. The power struggle between these two titans was fierce and bloody, causing a rift that the Republic struggled to mend. In the midst of these civil wars, the Roman populace was suffering. The constant power shifts led to instability, and the common people bore the brunt of it. The society was yearning for peace and stability, a longing that would play a crucial role in the rise of Octavian. Rome was a boiling pot of ambition, conflict, and unrest. The stage was set for a change, a transformation that would alter the course of history. The Roman Republic was teetering on the edge, and it needed a savior. In this chaos, a young man named Octavian was about to step onto the stage of history, forever changing the course of the Roman Empire. Born into an equestrian family, Octavian was thrust into the political arena at a young age. His birth in 63 BC into a family of modest wealth and social standing was a humble beginning for a man destined to shape Rome's future. His father, an equestrian, passed away when Octavian was just four years old, leaving him and his sister in the care of their mother, Atia. However, destiny had a grander plan for Octavian. His mother was the niece of none other than Julius Caesar, the powerful military general and statesman. Recognizing the potential in his young nephew, Caesar adopted Octavian and began grooming him for a life in politics and military service. Octavian was a diligent student, honing his skills in rhetoric, philosophy, and military strategy. Caesar's influence was profound, shaping Octavian's worldview and instilling in him a deep understanding of political maneuvering. The bond between them strengthened, and Octavian became an integral part of Caesar's political machinery. But the idyllic mentorship was cut short, in 44 BC, Julius Caesar was assassinated, leaving Rome in turmoil. Octavian, just 19 years old and studying in Greece, received news of his adoptive father's demise. He was named Caesar's political heir, a testament to their close relationship and Caesar's belief in Octavian's abilities. When Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC, Octavian was in a position to claim his inheritance and step into the power vacuum. The stage was set for Octavian's dramatic rise to power, marking the end of his early years and the beginning of his journey to become Augustus, Rome's first emperor. With Julius Caesar gone, the Roman Republic was in turmoil, opening the door for Octavian's rise. The young Octavian, just 19 years old, found himself in the midst of political chaos. But he was not a man to sit on the sidelines, he was a man of action and ambition, qualities necessary for his meteoric rise to power. Octavian's first move was to secure his position by leveraging his close relationship with Caesar. He posthumously adopted himself as Caesar's son, gaining not only the loyalty of Caesar's legions, but also the enormous wealth Caesar had accumulated. With this newfound power and influence he set out to avenge his father's assassination, forming the Second Triumvirate with Mark Antony and Lepidus to consolidate power. The Triumvirate however was a shaky alliance, failing to bring the stability Rome desperately needed. Octavian soon found himself in a power struggle with Mark Antony, who had allied himself with the Egyptian Queen Cleopatra. This rivalry culminated in the famed Battle of Actium in 31 BC, a naval confrontation that would decide the fate of Rome. Outmaneuvering Antony and Cleopatra, Octavian emerged victorious, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. But conquering his enemies was only half the battle. Octavian knew the real challenge lay in maintaining his power. To do so, he embarked on a series of political maneuvers to consolidate his control over Rome. He appealed to the Roman Senate promising to restore the Republic and relinquish his powers, only to have them granted back to him with even more authority. 
This cleverly crafted image of a humble servant of the state endeared him to the public and the Senate alike. Octavian also understood the importance of public perception. He adopted the name Augustus, meaning the revered one, presenting himself as a godlike figure. He initiated an era of peace and prosperity, known as Pax Romana, which further solidified his popularity among the citizens. His reign was marked by effective governance, significant building projects, and the expansion of Roman territory, all of which helped to cement his legacy. Behind the scenes, Augustus maintained tight control over the military, ensuring their loyalty through generous salaries and pensions. He created a professional standing army, the Praetorian Guard, to protect his person and his power. By monopolizing military might, he effectively eliminated any potential threats to his rule. By 27 BC, Octavian had skillfully navigated the treacherous waters of Roman politics. He had outmaneuvered all his rivals, defeated his enemies, and won over the hearts of the Roman people. His transformation from Octavian to Augustus was complete. He stood not as a mere triumvir or consul, but as the princeps, the first citizen, the undisputed leader of Rome. His rule marked the end of the Roman Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire, an empire that would shape the course of history for centuries to come. By 27 BC, Octavian had outmaneuvered all his rivals and stood as the undisputed leader of Rome. With his enemies vanquished, Octavian took on a new name and title, Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of Rome. But how did he rule? What changes did he bring? Let's delve into the reign of Augustus Caesar, a period that would forever change the face of Rome. Augustus was not just a conqueror, he was also a reformer. He set about reshaping the Roman government, mindfully balancing the powers of the Senate and the people with his own authority. This delicate equilibrium allowed him to maintain the semblance of a republic while exercising absolute power. He reformed the Roman tax system, shifting the burden from the poor to the rich. He also established a professional salaried army, replacing the previous system where soldiers were reliant on the spoils of war. This new approach ensured loyalty to the state rather than individual generals, thereby reducing the risk of civil wars. Augustus was also keen on infrastructure development. He famously said that he found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. He initiated numerous construction projects including temples, aqueducts, and roads. These not only beautified Rome but also served practical purposes, improving the city's water supply and transportation system. His approach to governance extended beyond the borders of Rome. Augustus realized that continuous expansion through conquest was unsustainable, and instead focused on consolidating and securing the empire's existing territories. He established Roman law, language and culture in these provinces, integrating them more closely into the Roman Empire. One of his most significant achievements was the establishment of the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and stability that lasted for more than two centuries. This was not a time without conflict, but large-scale wars were rare, and the empire enjoyed a level of prosperity and tranquility it hadn't seen in years. The Pax Romana was more than just a peaceful era, it was a period of cultural flourishing. Literature, art and philosophy thrived under Augustus's patronage. He himself was a patron of Virgil and Horace, two of Rome's greatest poets. This cultural renaissance harkened back to the glory days of the Greek civilization and helped Rome establish its own cultural identity. Augustus also understood the importance of public image, he presented himself as a humble servant of the state, living in a modest house rather than a palace, and wearing a simple toga instead of royal attire. He even refused the title of rex or king, instead opting for princeps, meaning first citizen. This calculated humility helped him maintain popularity amongst the masses and the senate alike. However his reign was not without criticism. His moral reforms aimed at promoting traditional Roman values were seen as oppressive by some. He was also accused of being a tyrant, ruling with an iron fist under the guise of a republic. Despite these criticisms there was no denying the stability and prosperity his reign brought to Rome. In many ways Augustus was a paradoxical figure. He was a reformer and a conservative, a benevolent ruler and a cunning politician, a man of the people and an absolute monarch. He skillfully navigated the complex political landscape of Rome, maintaining a delicate balance of power that allowed him to rule effectively while keeping the masses and the Senate content. Augustus Caesar's reign marked a period of relative peace and stability, a stark contrast to the turmoil that had characterized the Roman Republic. His reforms, his approach to governance and his consolidation of power 
set the stage for the Roman Empire's Golden Age, forever cementing his place in history as Rome's first emperor. Augustus Caesar's reign ended in AD 14, but his impact on the Roman Empire and the world can still be felt today. His rule was a turning point in the annals of history, leaving a legacy that has echoed through the ages. Augustus's reforms, his influence on subsequent emperors, and his role in shaping Rome and the modern world, are all testaments to his enduring impact. Augustus instituted a system of governance known as the Principate, which cleverly maintained the illusion of a republic while in reality, consolidating power in his hands. This balance between the appearance of a republic and the reality of an autocracy proved so effective that it was maintained for nearly three centuries after his death. This system allowed Rome to enjoy a period of peace and stability, known as the Pax Romana, which lasted for over 200 years. Throughout his reign, Augustus implemented numerous reforms that transformed the Roman Empire. He reorganized the military creating a professional standing army and a navy, thereby ensuring Rome's dominance on land and sea. He also established the Praetorian Guard, an elite unit tasked with the protection of the emperor, setting a precedent for future rulers. His reforms extended beyond the military, reaching deep into the social and economic fabric of the empire. He initiated numerous building projects, famously claiming that he found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. This transformation was not only physical but also symbolic, marking Rome's transition from a republic to an empire. Augustus's influence on subsequent emperors is undeniable. His adoption of the title princeps, meaning first citizen, set a precedent for future emperors, who continued to use this title to assert their authority while maintaining the illusion of equality with their citizens. His model of governance, his military reforms and his approach to public works were all emulated by his successors, demonstrating the lasting impact of his rule. But perhaps the most significant aspect of Augustus's legacy is his role in shaping the modern world. The Roman Empire under Augustus laid the foundations for Western civilization as we know it today. The legal and administrative systems he established have influenced legal systems worldwide. The Latin language which flourished under his rule gave rise to the Romance languages and influenced the development of many others. Augustus also had a profound impact on the arts. He was a patron of literature, fostering the works of great Roman poets like Virgil and Horace, whose writings continue to be studied and admired today. The architectural innovations of his time, such as the use of concrete and the arch, have influenced modern architecture. In conclusion, Augustus Caesar's reign marked a significant turning point in world history. His reforms transformed the Roman Empire, his influence shaped the role of future emperors, and his legacy continues to impact our modern world. So, as we reflect on the life and legacy of Augustus Caesar, we are reminded of his journey from Octavian, a young man in a crumbling republic, to the first emperor of one of history's most powerful empires. His story is a testament to the power of ambition, leadership and vision, qualities that resonate across the centuries and continue to inspire us today.